So here we are with the iPad running iOS 10 and the new GarageBand and it's very, very good piece of software. You can record 32 tracks of either audio or inbuilt sounds on this. Uh, indeed, with the necessary uh, ancillaries, you can actually record tracks at once on this and record an entire band, but you need other bits of kit. Here I am sat at my coffee table to demonstrate the fact that there are no hidden extras here. This is just the iPad and nothing else. So, GarageBand, I'm going to go and start a new song. Now it gives you two options at the top, tracks or live loops. If you're a songwriter, you're more likely to be using tracks. If you're a DJ and maybe just playing with sounds and beats and, and riffs and stuff, then live loops is for you. So I'm gonna start with tracks and I'm gonna find first the app called Drummer. Now this is a human sounding drum machine that's built into GarageBand and it is immensely good. Uh, and I shall demonstrate with a single touch of drummer and then the play button you have an instant drum rhythm. You have various settings here as well. You can make it sound more complicated or more simple, louder or softer, and even tinker with individual drum sounds to make your own beats. So for example, if I press play now and vary the hi-hat complexity, you'll hear it. I'm going to stick with the second setting, I think that's pretty good. You can also vary the fills. There you go. I'm going to minimise the fills, I just want a little fill at the end maybe. Um, so there is my uh, initial setting with the drums. Now I'm going to speed the tempo up. In the corner is a little spanner symbol which enables you to change the tempo so I'm going to do that. I'm going to, yeah, one, two, eight. There we go. That's uh, a bit faster than that. Also, I'll just go back into the spanner symbol. I'm going to change the key that I'm going to record in. Uh, now, this is something that you need to do if you know that you're going to record a song in a certain key. It is useful to set it here because it means that all the chords that I'm about to show you on the other instruments are all chords that are related to its parent key. So I'm going to change it to E minor. Uh, don't worry from a musical theory point of view here because actually you can just get going and press chords and everything works very nicely. It's very Apple, very fluffy and very lovely and it works well. So I'm going to now add a bass line using the internal bass guitar. So there's a little button here that enables you to toggle between the instrument and the main window where you'll be adding tracks. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to add a bass here. So I'm just going to tap on that uh, and then I'm presented with a, a, what looks like a fretboard but instead of frets they've got chords written. So I can go I can just create a bass line just by tapping those four different strings I don't need to know where to put my fingers. If you are a bass player, however, you can go to notes and you are presented with a fretboard. And then a rather neat little bend function for that extra sort of human touch. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to chords. Now we have an autoplay function, which allows you to tap a, a chord and it'll play the bass line and it'll play it at the tempo that you've set.
Okay, so, and the further round you go on autoplay, it becomes more complicated. You know, that's, that's a little bit too complicated, really, for a bass line. You want something simple and driving to go with those drums. So, I'm going to record a bass line. So now if I go back to the main window, I'm just going to briefly go back to drummer because there is a, a button has appeared since I've recorded that bass and it's called follow. So it'll allow you to follow with the kick and snare, it'll allow you to follow the bass track that I've just done. And if I click on that, you can see that it comes up in my list. It's the only track at the moment, but you can make the drums follow any of the other tracks the rise of the machines. This is very, very good indeed. So if I now press uh, play, the drums will lock in with the bass a bit more. That bass drum is now following the bass guitar a lot better. And now we have a very solid basis on which to put our other instruments. So I'm going to add a guitar now. Uh, let's have a look. There we go. So we have four sounds available. We have the acoustic guitar, a clean electric guitar, hard rock, distorted guitar, and like a roots rock, which is more of a sort of second clean sound, really. So let's listen to the roots rock guitar. You can strum a chord, or you can play individual notes. Or you can set it to autoplay again. That seems quite complicated. Let's have a look at number two, see what happens. Let's have a look at number three. Let's go with that one. So I'm going to go back to the main window just to check that everything's the cursor is in the right place. Generally speaking, you'll want to start from the beginning. So that's this little button up here. It's like the, the backwards arrow with a little line that takes the cursor back to the beginning. Now, I don't necessarily have to click on the guitar to go back to the where I'm good to play, because as soon as you press record, the page will come up for you to play your chords in. Okay, it's quite loud at the moment, so let's go back to the main window and just quieten the guitar down a little bit in your mixer. So you drag your page over and just drag the slider down slightly. Now, it didn't catch the first note. So I can go in, if I double click on this, edit. Your guitar part now comes up here and you can see that there's nothing showing at the beginning. There's the first note is that one there. So I'd like to put a bottom E string in here. So I grab my pencil here and put a note in. And then I can do things like dragging it about and varying the length and also the velocity, which is the volume. So maybe I want something a little bit louder at the beginning. Don't forget the mix is, it's down in the mix here. So I'm gonna click done. Now there's a note at appearing at the beginning, which means that when I press play now, you'll hear the note that was missing. Great, fantastic. So just before I move on to the keyboard sounds, there are some very good string sounds here. I'm a violinist, and so I play my parts in, um, but these, these are extremely good, very, very usable sounds. And you tap on it once to pizzicato, or drag across for bowed. You can decide, we've got the, the full range of, of uh, stringed instruments here. Maybe I'm just gonna take the basses off because I've got a bass line anyway. Maybe the cello's off as well. So I'm just left with first violin, second violins, violas. There we go. 
and you get a lower sound if you brush up and a higher sound if you go from the top down. And there's an autoplay function once again. They're really good. Autoplay one is pizzicato and the others are arco boat. Okay, so uh, let's, let's go with number three and just see what happens. Don't forget you can tweak all of this afterwards. In the edit window just now with the guitar, I put an extra note in. So the computer is saying, well, here's something that might work. Feel free to tweak it if you like. Really, really good interaction. I like, it's good. A little bit high in the mix for me, so I'm just gonna turn that down a bit and bring the guitar up very slightly. There we go. It is worth tweaking the mix as you go because there are, it just makes it a bit more difficult to hear what you're doing if something's really overpowering. Anyway, now I'm gonna get a keyboard sound. Now, the keyboards on this include something, a synth called Alchemy, which is really expensive sounding, and it actually it appears on all the Pro uh, software that Apple produced, such as Logic Pro. So I'm gonna go on the keyboard, and I'm just gonna, well, there we go, it's opened up on Alchemy. If it doesn't open up on Alchemy, there are various main menus, so keyboards brings up all the classic hammered organs, pianos, electric pianos, then the Alchemy synth gives you um, a subsection of leads and pads and all that sort of thing. So I'm gonna go for pads first. Uh, analog silk, I wonder what that'll sound like. Hey, <laughs> you like it. So you have the same uh, auto function here. But I am going to use the onboard keyboard this time, and you can input your own notes or chords. And I'm gonna do that here, uh, just so you can see that you can play notes in as well. Now, there's a little iffy bit in the middle there. Um, so I'm just gonna to go to edit and I'm gonna play back, then you'll see my keyboard chords that are showing up here. That one. Now, I played an A minor instead of B minor. So I'm just gonna drag those a box over those three notes you may need to open this to, to, um, to fully see this. So it's this chord. There we go. So. Now actually that second chord was okay. Now that's the timing. The timing of that chord is also off. So there are two ways of doing this. Either you can go and do what's quantized. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. Or you could drag them to the bar line. So I'm going to quantize this instead and show you about track settings. So we've got the little mixer window here, which brings up a load of options for your uh, things like effects. There are 10 effects built into this and you can use any four of them simultaneously, plus another three, which are global. So uh, I'm going to, Go to track settings and quantization. I want the straight rhythm and I want it to quantize to the nearest eighth note. Now those um, alchemy stabs are going to be in place. That'll do for me. Okay, so. There's a little bit about the keyboards. You've got also uh, things like the Hammond organ. Now, the Hammond only sounds really good if you're constantly adjusting it, like the speed of the rot rotary speaker, that sort of thing. But luckily, the iPad and GarageBand will record all of those movements as well as, well as the notes. So, 
You have also other things like percussion and the chorus, which is all which are all features of the original Hammond. So I'm going to play just a very simple top line with this. Okay, I mean, it's slightly incongruous with that um, alchemy synth, but the idea is there. Let's take it down in the mix. Now, if I want to listen to that Hammond on its own, I'm just going to click the headphone symbol on that track. You'll notice that the other tracks go grey. You can hear all my settings that I made on the fly were stored and they play back. If you want to change the rotary speaker, you go to edit with the Hammond as we had before, we had the notes here. At the bottom, there's also rotation. So it allows you to actually change that. It doesn't go into the draw bars, into those harmonic sliders because it's just, I mean, we are talking about a free pro and this is free for iOS 10 users, free. Zero pounds and zero pence. So uh, I'm just going to go and there we go. So now we're going to uh, add some actual sounds from the mic. We mustn't forget the mic here because this allows the human outside world to interact with the digital nature of this recording. So I'm going to select another track. Yeah, you have world instruments and things like this. Feel free to play with it at your leisure. And that's the good thing with this. You discover things just by accident, and that's the fun of it. Audio recorder, voice. There we go. It now brings up something called lead vocals. So it's already putting effects ready for when you play it back. And I'm going to record something. You have a range of effects here. Uh, I'm actually going to... Um, Take the reverb off, that's vocal hall, that's a, like a reverb that it automatically puts on it. Uh, and I'm just gonna have the tone in the middle because I'm gonna do some backing vocals. So uh, here we go, I'm just gonna record a couple of bars. <laughs> now I'm gonna record the same part again by adding another track. And I'll show you why in a minute. third one. I'm going to take the level down of those other two so it doesn't put me off. Notice I've taken one headphone off in order to, um, to do this. When you're recording with the mic you must wear headphones otherwise the sound from the iPad will go through the mic as well as your vocal and it'll be impossible to mix. So one more go on that. Notice there's something called pitch control here and that's like an auto-tune. Very useful. Now I'm going to listen to those three vocal tracks on their own. So I'm going to click the headphone symbol on all three. Just take the level down of that third one there. When you record three of something, not only does it give it that thicker sound, but it actually has a corrective feature built into its very nature, which is that any slight tuning inaccuracies in one part will be masked by the other two tracks. So it's quite clever, that. Uh, if you go into the mixer, uh, we can now uh, have those three backing vocals so that they're spread across your left and right headphone. So let's go to this track here. You have a track pan control. I'm gonna set that all the way to the left. This one stays in the middle, and this one I'm gonna to move to the right. And then have a listen to that. So Master Effects is a reverb controller, basic reverb, which you could apply. 
to these tracks, which just makes it sit a bit nicer in your mix. There you go, you can hear the reverb there. Maybe it's just have a bit more, just, to, just so you can hear it. You never want to overcook reverb, but um, if we, I just bring that back into context now, unsolo that, let's get rid of the effects bar. Let's bring all these up here. There we go. Yeah, be all right. Now, let's say I wanted to cut and paste those tracks onto the second half of my song. It's only an eight bar song at the moment. If I click one, hold it, so it's a bit like shift on a computer when you're selecting more than one thing, and then I double click on that, I'm gonna copy those three parts, and then I'm gonna move my cursor. Notice how there's a little measure at the top which tells you where you are, but essentially I want to get it on that bar line. There we go. And then I just go to paste, and there they are. So um, I'm going to now show you a bit about the effects that are built into this um, uh, this device. So I'm going to use the one of the vocals as a guinea pig to show you. And in fact, I use the middle one because it's in the middle of my mix. So headphones, that means I'm only listening. You can hear the auto tune kicking in there. So I've got track volume, track pan, a solo and a mute button. Then I've got something called plugins and EQ. Uh, I have a basic thing called a compressor. And what a compressor does is it takes the loud portions of a signal and squashes them towards the quietest parts of the signal. And then you bump everything up. So you've got a nice sort of um, undynamic um, sound, which you'd want for lead vocals, so that your vocals come out over the mix. That's what a compressor's really for. You have basic bass and treble. But you also have a slightly finer control EQ. If you go into plugins and EQ, a new page opens with all of these things showing. Uh, the blue on the right means they're switched on. Uh, the grayed out means they're off. So I'm going to switch that enhanced tuning off. Um, I just want to hear it without any plugins at all at the moment. So this is with no plugins. I actually prefer it like that at the moment. But let's look at the visual EQ. Let's switch that on. Brings up a rather colourful little bar here where you've got treble, mid and bass. So if I want to bring up my ultra top end treble to hear the clarity of my voice, I can do something like this. Bear in mind that that is the mic that's built into this and it's totally usable. So I'm going to actually do that on my other tracks. I'm going to bring up that visual EQ, switch off my other tracks here, and I'm going to do the same operation on my other two channels so that I can have all my vocals nice and present in the mix. The more treble you have on your backing vocals, the lower they can be in the mix and they're still contributing to the overall vibe of what you're trying to do here. So. And there we go, they sit in nicely. Now, there is a, a feature called multi-take recording, and I'm gonna show you that in conjunction with this. This is the iRig Stomp. It's a way of getting a guitar into your iPad. Uh, these are, I mean, this is about 50 pounds. You can get a cheaper one, which is just a little barrel without the volume control and the switch. Um, this is actually designed more for live use, but you can use it uh, in a studio setting as well. Uh, the cheaper version is about 20, 25 pounds or something. Very useful if you're a guitarist and you want to use this as a songwriting tool. So I'm going to close the, all the pages down at the moment. Uh, there we go, including the mixer bar. And I'm going to add another track. So before I do that, I'm just going to unplug the iPad. There we go. Plug the um, my input in. And then I'm going to take this special lead, which has four contacts on it rather than three. It's a special iPad, iPod lead. 
and an iPhone. You can get this on an iPhone, a uh, garage band, uh, with pretty much the same functionality, but the menus are a little bit buried. Uh, so an iPad is best for this, really. So I'm going to pick up my bass and I'm going to record a bass line that goes with this in place of the original bass sound that we just had. But I'm going to switch what's called multi-take on, which means that I can keep playing through that sequence and it'll loop until I get a sound that I'm happy with. So, uh, go back to the beginning. I'm going to add an amp, a bass amp. There we go. Okay. There's a little jack plug at the top, which sets my monitor to on. And there it is. So um, I'm now going to record something uh, and I'm going to do a multi-take on it. So to do that, I need to go back to my main window, select the mixer button and then go to track settings. And there's recording and then multi-take recording and I'm going to switch that on. So now I'm going to uh, record that bass line and see what happens. I'm actually going to get rid of this other bass as well. Um, or I could just mute it. Why not do that? I'll just mute it in case I want to keep it. So that means that you won't hear the bass. There you go. So I'm going to put my own bass on now. So let's find my original track. You have to select that as well before you record, or it will think you're recording the bass guitar through software again. So make sure that the track that you're going to play on is selected. And I'm just going to double check that I've got my monitor on. Yep. Okay, here we go. So that was takes one, two, and three. I purposefully made take three the best one because actually with a bass line, you want to try and keep it simple and punchy and groovy with those drums. So if I go back to my uh, main window, under my bass track here, you will see the little number three, three takes. So if I double click on this, in the middle is takes. If you go on that, you can then select which take you want it. Uh, I want take three, but I could, I could use take two instead. Notice that the display at the bottom changes slightly to show that take as a graphical representation. So I'm gonna use number three. You can delete the unused takes. This has got a hundred and something gigabytes of memory on it, so I'm not really too worried about that. But if you're running low on memory, you can clear any unused takes. Audio is very memory intensive, so when you really fill it up, you will know about it. So I'm going to um, listen to that bass line. Now, I missed out a note on the beginning of that D chord on, in bar four. Now I can get a bit creative here and actually use a note from my original take. Okay, so I'm going to edit a note in that, that is the missing one. Can you see at the, at the bottom, it's missing that note. In fact, it's missing two notes. <laughs> okay, so. So I need those two notes to go there. So I'm going to go split with the scissors and then I'm going to go split here with the scissors. And I'm going to go here and split with the scissors. Then I'm going to lose that bit. I'm going to copy that bit and paste it where the cursor is. There we go. Now I'm just going to have a little listen to that. Mm -hmm. 
and there I've fixed my baseline. So the basic editing features on this are mega useful. So there, are, there is a, a representation of what you might do when writing a song on GarageBand. Now I could put some guitar on this as well. It's pretty much the same operation. You just plug uh, a, an amp in and you can set your guitar up with your guitar amp. So anyway, now we've finished with this, go to My Songs. Uh, and then it sets, it saves the song automatically when you leave the application. I'm going to go select. I'm going to get select that single thing. You can see they're all wobbling about a bit. Uh, and then I'm going to go to the arrow at the top and you can share it with, well, I mean, you can probably share it with a Mars space program fairly soon. But you can put it on Facebook, SoundCloud, YouTube, whatever you want to do. You can send it to iTunes. You can open it in anything else. It's all very, very nice. Uh, you can put it on I, iCloud Drive. Uh, you can do anything with it. So um, anyway, there is a version of GarageBand for you. Have fun.